Hi, John. What are you up to? All right. Do you remember why we're going to do that? To be able to take off the train. Yep. So, goal at this point is there's no sense in reinventing the wheel here, or rather reinventing the frame. There's mounts that are already set up. It's already made to reinforce all of this. So what I've got here is some really basic, not exactly thin wall, but it's basic one by two that you can get just about anywhere. I've got several chunks of this from snowmobile pallets and a couple of other things. So what we're gonna do is take off this frame that Power Wheel made and we're just gonna sister a frame right underneath it. Obviously the front end on this thing is not staying. What we're gonna do is run the sistered on frames probably about a foot or so past where the stock axle is. That way we can take this nose and we can be able to make the flip nose pivot underneath along with potentially have a metal bumper mount type area. I mean, let's face it, if we get out on the trail sooner or later, that is gonna take an impact and it's not gonna survive. Especially the way John drives. John has his I just used the grinder enthusiasm face on. Actually, he's finally getting comfortable with the grinder, so that's a good thing. So he's been cleaning up the rail over there. Over here, we've got the frame rail set up. So I wanted you to see the update versus, or reinforcement rather, versus original. I've gone ahead and welded in a crossbar right here that should sit just barely inside of where the engine bay would be. Right now the frame's upside down, but just work with me. And then after this was welded in, we sliced off the front end because obviously that's not going to put up with gas power. We've got these rails here that I've gone down through and I've notched it to fit over the top of the original frame mounts. And then I've squared it into this, which go figure I found that this is actually bent a little bit, but it's only off about an eighth of an inch, so we're going to run it. And the reason being is this is going to give me a center line for where the rear axle should be, and eventually could end up working as the mount for the shock later, or at least a location for the shock later. So as it is right now, we're going to leave this where it exists. I have welded these pieces right here on both sides. That way in the future, I can weld from here out and make some sort of bumper mount in order to tie this together. But for now, I just need to make sure this stays where it's supposed to. So in the future, I can just slice that off and put a piece in. From here, we're going to start welding everything up. I haven't figured out whether I should put a crossbar in right here or whether we should wait until we have the jack shaft assembly all figured out. There's going to be an independent video done on the engine setup, but this is how one of these FNRs is supposed to be mounted. So imagine this whole assembly turned that way and then sitting right there. So it's going to drop from this direction down into the jack shaft. Still working on this in order to figure out a way to make a how-to on doing this correctly because there's only one place that sells the motor mount that actually has the mount for this on it. Are you done welding yet? No. You don't do much welding, do you? I don't. No. No, welding is still in the scary category for now. Is that the don't tell my secrets face? <laughs> if you need a thrash around welder that you can just throw in the back of the truck or something and not care, 
This Vevor MiG-130 is just plain an amazing low-budget welder. I mean, these welds aren't perfect. Focus. But, as far as just throwing some scrap metal steel together, that one I got a little shaky. Ignore that one. But, throwing some scrap metal steel together... It's an amazing little welder. I'll post a link for it in the description if anybody's looking for something just to have as a budget burner. So at this point, I debated welding all of this up solid. I've decided against it. I think what I'm going to do is just this inside clip right here where it's easy for me just to chunk it off later and then weld more of this from here back because ultimately this is janky it is way thinner than this stuff and i shouldn't rely on it and i know the comment section is going to be telling me that's a bad idea so for those who preemptively told me bad idea, you win. I'm just going to do that edge right there. We'll replace that fully out the rear at another time. On a fatherly episode of Do As I Say, Not As I Do, John's got his goggles on, cleaning up the flux core spatter on the frame. We're not worried about the rust per se because we're going to go right over it with rust-oleum extreme coverage but the one thing we have found is the splatter from the really cheap flux core wire for some reason messes with the rust-oleum paint and it's interesting and I want to point this out that it seems to just be the really really cheap wire the Italian wire that I run that I've linked to many times I don't have that issue with so I'm going to bet that's why the internet freaks out, is the cheap wire. I've got to be turning into one of those old people that get stuck in their ways or something. It's Rust-Oleum High Performance Enamel. They used to call this Extreme Coverage. They now call it High Performance Enamel. Just for the people that are going to go look up the wrong thing. John has gone through and painted it, so it looks pretty good. There we are. And yes, that is a fishing magnet. That's what I use 600-pound fishing magnets for now that they're available all over the internet everywhere. So we're going to flip this thing up onto some sawhorses. We're going to put the body on. We're not going to bother bolting it down because we just want to make sure that nothing got tweaked while we were welding. So we have these longer than they're supposed to because we're going to slice them off to be able to create the flip open hood I do. Oh. <laughs> Don't drop it. Alright, let me come to the other side here so you can show them. Okay, go for it. There we go. And then take this off. <clears throat> so this is supposed to go here. But that's not but that's not my problem to deal with. <laughs> well, you heard it here. Apparently I now have something I have to do on the project. But John's done good. He's run the grinder and ran a drill with a bristle brush. And he made sure to actually wear all of his protective gear. Which is a lot better than I do. Have fun, guys. Bye.